Hi guys, welcome to video number two in the Intro to Stoic series now, since I get to make more than one. Um, good news, yay! We are not doing one-step problems for any more than one example. My most favorite part of chemistry is this part, because it's kind of like setting up and solving puzzles. So let's do some mass-to-mass -mass and mass-to-particle problems, um, and then I will turn you loose and let you do all kinds of amazingness on your own. So, as you might have guessed, we can go between anything we already know. So, hopefully we remember and love our little chart here from way back in the day when we were doing that dimensional analysis. If you don't remember and love your chart, you should make friends with it again. And if that feel, makes you feel sad, you should find a chem teacher. I'm not going to spend time re-going over what our little conversion chart is or how to use it. I'm going to assume you remember. What I am going to remind you about is that you need to make a map. Your map has to be on your paper, period. I don't want to hear any complaining. Just do it. Um, your map should also c include the mole ratios, where they go. As we get harder problems, we'll have more steps that need to get woven into that. But this is our bridge. It's how we get from one thing to another. You've got a sample here in the middle of your page. I'm not going to spend a whole heck of a lot of time. It's easier for me to show you by showing you. Um, so we will do a couple of different examples to help us go through that. Um, but what I want to make sure that you know is that it's okay. And the reason I drew mine on the last page with those little sticks for parts of the bridge, like the sides of the bridge, is we'll start adding some different things here to help us to know how to get from where to where when it's just not moles to moles. You can write extra information in your map, like little reminders, like things that we would do up here. And that's okay. Just make sure that your map makes sense and gets you from the beginning to the end by the time um, that, that you like need to calculate something. So let's look at an example for this. So remember, step one is to get a balanced reaction. So I'm going to try to do this in color. Let's see if I can remember for my own self to do this in colors. So I will put my map in purple. And then let's see here. Hello, green. Welcome to the party. Let's do some calculations. If you don't want colors, of course, that's fine, but mm, yay, colors. So here we go. The question wants to know how many grams of sodium chloride. So I'm going to use this, let's see here, with my green. How many grams of sodium chloride? So I'm going to need to write that compound. Could theoretically be formed from a synthesis reaction. So telling me what kind of reaction, what it should look like. Remember, if you don't, yikes. Uh, synthesis means I should take two separate elements and put them together into one compound. I have 30 grams of chlorine gas are reacted with excess solid sodium. Guys, right now we just need to know that this word excess means that I have enough for this reaction to happen. Here in a few days we'll talk about limiting reactants and then you'll be in charge of finding out which one is limiting and which one is excess. But for right now I'm just going to tell you. So let's get this reaction written. So I need some chlorine gas. Again, if you want to put your state markers at this point, you can. They're not necessary for what we're doing. So it is up to you at this point if you want to have them there for your happiness or not. And then I get two moles. Remember, my coefficients tell me how many moles of things that I have. So I've got two moles of sodium chloride created in the synthesis reaction. So now I need to go through and make my map. I'm going to do that with that purple color. I'm going to start with what I know. So I know I have 30 grams of chlorine gas. So 30.00 grams, going to be important for those sig figs, of chlorine gas. And I want to know, what do I want to know? How many grams, so the number of grams of sodium chloride. So I've got to get my map. Guys, remember, I cannot go from grams to grams. In order to convert, I have to use moles because these coefficients are telling me the relative number of moles, not the relative number of grams. Chemistry is worthless with grams of things. We must get into moles. So my map is going to be to convert from grams to moles. If we need a reminder, remember we can do that using the molar mass, and I'll show you how to get that in just a second. Once I have moles of chlorine gas, I can walk across my bridge using my mole ratio. My mole ratio uses my coefficients to connect what I know to what I want to know. That will give me the number of moles of chlorine gas. But I don't want the number of moles of chlorine gas. I need the number of grams. So after I get moles, I'm going to turn and walk up. And I can go from moles to grams using, again, the molar mass. 
So I've got to figure out the molar mass of these two things first. So we're going to find some space, and I'm going to say the molar mass of chlorine gas and the molar mass of sodium chloride. I'm going to go ahead and do them in that same purple color to keep this as my math part. So the molar mass of chlorine gas isn't that bad. Remember, we go to our handy-dandy periodic table. You should find that the mass of chlorine is 35.45, but this 2 means I have two of them. If you don't need to show this step, that's fine. Like that times 2 is not that bad. Um, and then we also need to do the molar mass of sodium chloride. So again, if it's been just more than a little minute, we're going to go find our periodic table. We're going to find our molar mass, so 35.45. And let's see here, 22.99. And I should be able to quickly, hopefully in my head, but if not, get a calculator. Don't guess. Get a calculator. It would be terrible to miss this question because you guessed. Get a calculator. Um, so I get 58.44 more or less. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Now I can do some math. So let's grab that green. So I need to calculate. To calculate, I start with what I know. So I want to know the number of grams of sodium chloride. So grams of sodium chloride is equal to what I know. 30.00 grams. Yes, you have to write everything of chlorine gas. Then I follow my map. So this is my starting place. Now I need the molar mass of chlorine. So let's get this on here. I need the grams of chlorine to cancel out. Hopefully we remember from way back in the day that one mole of a substance is equal to its molar mass. So I should have 70.90 grams of Cl2. From here, now I've got the number of moles. I know that I've got the number of moles. Let me grab another color. If we're not sure, remember we can cancel these things out. What I'm left with is what I've got. So I'm at this moles of chlorine gas step. From here I need to use my mole ratio. So I look for my coefficients. I have one mole of chlorine gas for every two moles of sodium chloride. Again, I need this to cancel. So I'm going to say one mole of chlorine gas yields two moles of sodium chloride. Now I'm to here. Again, if I'm not sure, I can cross out. Do I have, oops, forgot to label. Let's get some labels on there. Now I have two moles of sodium chloride. And then from here it says I can use my molar mass to find grams. So one mole of NaCl or sodium chloride. I have to go back and find my molar mass, which was 58.44. See if I can get all this to fit on here. Grams of NaCl. Whatever I have at the end should match what I'm looking for at the beginning, so an easy way to double check. I have grams of sodium chloride, and that's what I need. Now I'm going to grab my handy-dandy calculator. I'm going to calculate all of this out. Make sure that you either do it in two steps or you know what you're doing with that calculator to make sure your math comes out correctly. And I'm going to scoot over here, and we should have 49.46 grams of sodium chloride. Remember that how I determine my number here is determined by my number here. That's why all those zeros up there are important. My sig figs have to match what I started from. All right, so you've got a one-step problem. Now we've done a grams to grams problem. So let's see here if I can find a grams to moles kind of problem. Let's go do... Let's go do number six. The rest of them I think you can probably figure out by yourself. Um, of course, I will post them for you, but I want to make sure you've kind of seen one of everything. So let's skip, 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 and we'll skip over here to number six. All right, so number six says, I need to know how many molecules of hydrogen gas are required to react with some very small little part, 0.334 grams of nitrogen gas, in the synthesis of ammonia. Okay, oh my goodness, that's a lot of stuff going on over here. So what I want to know is how many molecules of hydrogen gas, that's what I want to know. I have 0.344 grams of nitrogen gas, and I'm going to make some ammonia. All right, so step number one, write that balanced equation. So hopefully you can do it by now, but if not, follow along. La, 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 writing some balanced equations. So let's see here, and then I get ammonia. Be careful, ammonia is NH3. Ammonium, the polyion you know is NH4. Totally different thing. So let's see here. Whoa, this is not balanced. Let's try a little harder. I need a 3 over here. 
It looks like I need a two over here. If you can do this in your head at this point, that is awesome. We'll save you some time. If not, by all means, make that list work it out. So let's see what I need to do next. I need to make my map. So let's get that purple color, try to stay with the same colors each time. And let's figure out what I know and what I want to know. So I know I have 0 0.334 grams of nitrogen gas. And I want to know the number of molecules of hydrogen gas. Remember we said we could use this um, ratio to go between any reactants or any products, which is the other reason I wanted to choose this one. It's okay, completely and totally, to go from one reactant to another, or if I had two products over here to go from a product to a product. Okay? Just because we went from reactant to product in the first example doesn't mean that's the only way you can go. Okay? So in this one, I want to go from reactant to reactant. I need to know how to get there, so I'm going to draw my map. I can't do anything with grams, so I need to go to moles. I can get to moles by doing my molar mass. From here, I'm going to scoot over using my mole ratio to get me across that bridge. Once I'm across the bridge, that will give me the number of moles of hydrogen gas, which is awesome, but that's not what I want. We've got to think carefully about how to make this other side of this bridge. How do I get from moles to molecules? The way that I do that is not by using the molar mass, here comes Avogadro's avocado, or however we're going to call that this time, and we're going to use Avogadro's number to get across that little baby bridge. So let's do some math. I'm going to start by setting up what I want to know. I want to know the number of molecules of hydrogen gas, so H2. I start by writing down what I know, follow my map. So I have 0 0.334 grams. I'm going to kind of squanch them a little bit so that I can fit all of this, of nitrogen gas. I need to find the number of moles of that by using the molar mass. Remember molar mass we just find by doing the periodic table, add up all of the different things in my compound, so I have two nitrogens. Um, one nitrogen is 14.01, so 28.02 grams of nitrogen is one mole of nitrogen. Obviously, it's okay to double stack your columns. Just make sure I can still read them when you're done. That gets me the number of moles. Again, if I'm not sure, I can cancel out my units and my compound, and I've got moles of nitrogen gas, which is what I should have. After that, I go across my bridge using those coefficients. Nitrogen doesn't have one, and hydrogen has three. So I need number of moles of nitrogen to cancel out so I can get moles of hydrogen. That means I need one mole of nitrogen to end up here and one, oops, sorry, three moles, try harder there, girl, three moles of hydrogen should go up here. Again, if I'm not sure, I can cancel out. If you don't need this step, by all means, skip it. You don't have to draw lines through things if you don't need to at this point. And then now I have moles of hydrogen gas, which is helpful, but I need molecules. So one mole of hydrogen gas is 6.022. Wow, that's pretty terrible. 6.022, let me do that up here, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecule of hydrogen gas. Whew, that's squashed on there. All right, so we're gone. I end up with molecules of hydrogen. I need to know the number of molecules of hydrogen. Then I very, very carefully, using my handy-dandy calculator, ask the calculator to calculate all of this calculation for me. Notice how the calculator is doing an awful lot of work here. Just saying. Thanks, calculator. Then let's see here. I find out with my handy-dandy calculator that I have 2.15 times 10 to the 22 molecules of hydrogen gas. Again, you want to put the state markers on there. You just go ahead and knock yourself out. I'm not going to look for them right now because it's not the focus of what we're doing. It just adds confusion and more stuff to keep track of. Be careful with your answer. I got my three sig figs from my three sig figs up here. If you don't remember why that's three sig figs, you should find a chem teacher and let them help you. Alrighty, so you should find on the table um, up here by my desk, or if you're watching a different teacher, go ask your teacher or check out Canvas to find the key for the rest of the notes. Um, by the time I see you next, you should have finished up the rest of your notes. Yes, I'm going to look. Um, and you should start on your homework practice, homework practice.